Hey y'all and welcome back to Lining Up Ducks. This has been a much requested video where I'm going to dive into exactly what a month ahead fund is and how it can help you take the stress and headache out of your monthly budgeting. Make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video and I'm going to give you several tips on how to build your month ahead fund fast. If you've never heard of a month ahead fund, which I hadn't up to a year ago, what that is is a fund that helps take the headache out of your budget on a month to month basis and balance out those due dates so it balances your month, allows you to pay bills on time, allows you to say bye bye to late fees. It also allows you if you're on a cash budget to do internet shopping and grocery pickup orders. The month ahead fund has completely changed the way we budget and it has taken all of the headache out of my month. I have set up a mock budget for you with easy round numbers in the income and in the bills. These are not our real numbers, but I do share all of our real numbers in my other budgeting videos and I will link those below if you are interested in watching them. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a traditional paycheck to paycheck budget with all of the month's expenses being paid out of the individual paychecks as they arrive. No extra savings, living paycheck to paycheck. For this example, we have a $4,000 take home pay. So each paycheck, we have $2,000 to work with. So let's take the first of the month. The first of the month carries a heavy financial load for most people. I mean, in our $4,000 budget, you take home $2,000 each pay period. So being that we're doing one pay period at a time, I'm gonna set this to the side and all of the 15th cups to the side. Okay, so now what we have here are all of the bills that we have due in the first paycheck of the month. So pretend you get paid on the first and the 15th. So the bills with a due date are your fixed expenses. And when I say fixed expenses, I mean they have a due date, you will have a late fee if you do not pay them on time. Groceries and restaurants are variable expenses. Those are expenses that you don't have a due date on, but they are necessary in your budget because you gotta eat. These are household expenses, fund money and sinking funds that are not paycheck dependent. So we can put money in these anytime we need to. In this example, each ball is $50 and I have enough to make $2,000 or half of our monthly income. So if we just paid our bills as they came along in the month, this is what it would look like. Our rent or our mortgage payment is going to be due on the first and it's $1,100. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Run away, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we've paid our rent. The next thing that we have to do is daycare. Daycare is a huge expense if you have children. So in this example, our daycare expense is $600. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, this is what we have left to work with and we have all of these still left to pay. Our water is $50. Our power is $150, so it gets three. Our internet is $50 and all we have left is one. We have $50 left to buy food with for this pay period. I cannot tell you how many times this happens in people's budgets. So we're gonna stick it in groceries because groceries is the most important. You can make your dollar stretch a lot farther there. This is a very typical scenario when you're looking at paycheck to paycheck budgeting without a month ahead fund. I always suggest that you pay yourself first, but I wanted to kind of give you an example. Hopefully there's not too many days left in the pay period before your next paycheck comes. Okay, so let's set our first month aside and do our second set. All right, our next paycheck comes in and our next group of expenses. Again, 
These are your fixed expenses that you must pay or there will be consequences. And these are your variable expenses. So on the 15th, your cell phone is due. This little bugger caused me endless trouble because it was always due on the 15th, but they would pull it out on the 13th or the 14th and it would totally throw off my month. So I put that on the 15th as an example. Your cell phone bill is $100, so it gets two. Your car payment is $300 a month, so one, two, three. Student loans are $250 a month, $250. Cable is $100 a month. A credit card payment is $150 a month. Your insurance is $200 a month. Groceries is $200 for the pay period. And your, in, your restaurants is $50 for the pay period. Now you have enough left to do your sinking funds. So your sinking funds for the pay period for the month are $200. Your fund money is $100. And your household expenses are $100. So here's the money that we really desperately needed at the beginning of the month's paycheck to go into our food budget. I know I'm not the only one that this has happened to before. So let's see what this budget looks like with a month ahead fund. Okay, now we're gonna take the exact same budget, but this time we're gonna introduce the month ahead fund. There's a couple of ways to do your month ahead fund. This particular month ahead fund example is just your fixed expenses. You can also do a month ahead fund with an entire month's worth of income, but it's more to save and it is a little too tempting because you know you're gonna have a little bit of extra in there where if it's just your expenses, you're less likely to touch it for things you want in a month instead of just keeping it for your bills. So exact same $2,000 per pay period, just our very first paycheck. We have our month ahead fund. Now this time we're going to pay ourselves first. We're gonna do our grocery budget, which is $200, that's one, and two, and then our restaurant fund, which is $50. And then we're also gonna pay some towards our sinking funds and some towards our house expenses and our fund money. So we'll do $50 in fund money and $50 to the household expenses, I think I did those backwards, and $100 to our sinking funds. The rest of this we're going to put in the head fund and then pay our bills. We have the same $1,100 a month rent payment. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. All right, and on the fifth of the month, our daycare is considered late. So we have a $600 daycare bill. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now also due on the fifth is our water bill. So it is $50 and then due on the 10th of the month is our internet, which is $50. And then our power is due on the 10th of the month, which is $150. All right, everything got paid, no stress. Everything got the money that it needed for this part of the pay period. Now let's look at the end of the month. Okay, again, your fixed expenses are here. Those have due dates and have consequences if you don't pay them on time. These are your variable expenses. And again, we are going to get our paycheck in and this time with a month ahead fund, we're going to pay ourselves first. So $200 for groceries, uh, $50 for restaurant. We're gonna finish our sinking funds for the month of $50 for household, $50 more for household, $50 more for fund money, and $100 more for our sinking funds. Put the rest in the month ahead fund and then pay our bills. So we have our cell phone bill, which is $100 due on the 15th. 
we have our car payment that is $300 due on the 18th, our student loan of $250 due on the 18th, our cable bill of $100 due on the 19th, our credit card, which is $150 due on the 20th, and our insurance, which is $200 due on the 27th. All right, everything got paid. We have all of our expenses for the month ahead fund for next month so we can make sure everything gets paid again next month. And there is no worries that everything will get paid because you have your month ahead fund. A little extra Murphy repellent never hurt anybody. If you're on a tight budget, how do you even start a month ahead fund? You need to have a separate emergency fund. So if you're in the Dave Ramsey baby steps, that would be a thousand dollar emergency fund. And I would do this step in between your emergency fund and your debt payoff. And this is just more Murphy repellent to keep you away from those budget emergencies that might start you dipping into your emergency fund. So how do you create one? If you're paid bi-weekly, you can use your extra paychecks in the year to create your month ahead fund. You would just treat them exactly the same as your other paychecks and put your month ahead fund in here. I'm going to do a whole nother separate video on how to make those extra paychecks work for you and your budget to give you more discretionary income in your monthly budget. But using your extra paychecks, definitely a great way to start your month ahead fund. Also, it's tax season. So using your tax refund to start your month ahead fund is great. Well, what if you don't have extra paychecks and you don't have a tax refund. I suggest selling things around your house, any furniture you're not using, jewelry you're not wearing, clothes you're not wearing. There are plenty of available sites online to sell all of the things that you don't want, not to mention the Facebook groups in your area. You could just cut out your extras as well for a month. So cut out your restaurant fund, tighten your budget up for your grocery budget. It might take you a few months to build it that way, but being certain that you're never gonna have another late bill is absolutely worth the sacrifice. The other thing I would say is start a side hustle. If you're going to be in debt payoff mode after you finish your month ahead fund, you may need an extra income source anyway, so go ahead and start that side hustle, put everything in your month ahead fund, and then start throwing everything at your debt snowball. For stay at home moms, there are a lot of work from home jobs that work around your children's schedule. I have some that worked well for me and some that did not work so well for me. And if you're interested in hearing about those, that is a whole nother video, but I will be glad to share. So that's it everybody. I hope you were able to see what a month ahead fund can do for you and your budget and keep you from having those late bills and the headache of moving paychecks around your due dates, balancing out your month, and keeping your sanity in your monthly budget. Please comment below if you have any experience with a month ahead fund or any ideas that I did not mention on how to build your month ahead fund faster. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for many more videos on budgeting, frugal ideas, and how you can save money. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. I'll see you in our next video.